Okay, grammar fans, welcome back. I know you thought you were escaping it, but no, it's coming right back at you. Okay, let me give you a quick little refresher course on the whole thing that we've learned about the parts of speech. All right, your basic setup here, your basic structure, that squat, fat looking little T. Remember, your subject goes on the left side, your verb goes on the right side. Adjectives modify the noun, adverbs modify the verb, and that's how it's structured. If you have conjunctions, which means, like, say, you've got two subjects. Your subjects would go on the double prong, and your conjunction would go on the dotted line. What if you have two verbs? You would draw that double prong in reverse. Your verbs would go on the horizontal line, and still your conjunction would go on the dotted line. It's really pretty simple. Then all the rest of it, adjectives and adverbs, would still go below the words that they relate to. Now that's what we've learned so far. Now it's time to learn something new. We've been looking at prepositions and prepositional phrases. Now it's time to figure out how we're going to put them up on the board, or in your case, on the paper. Your prepositions are going to go on the slightly slanted modifying line. Your preposition goes there. And the object of the preposition, which is going to be a noun, so that has to go on a noun line. Noun lines are horizontal. The object of the preposition. The object of the preposition is a noun, so it goes on a noun line. So that's your basic structure. Look at it more clearly. Empty. That little tail there, that's very important. Okay, do not do this. Don't do that. If you do that, that means something else that I won't get to teach you this year. I will be teaching it to you next year. That's something else. It means something totally different, so don't do that. See this little tail hanging down? That's important that you have that. If you don't do it like this, if you do it like that, that's going to get the big red X. That's wrong. Because that's telling me that whatever you're putting in here is a gerund. And you don't know what that is yet. Don't worry about that. We'll get into that next year. You draw this structure, that's telling me that whatever you're putting here, you think is a preposition. Your preposition goes here. And whatever you put here, you think is a noun, and that's the object of your preposition. They go together. Okay? That's your basic structure for that. Let's look at it in reality terms. I'll start off with the easy ones like of, let's just say time. That's pretty simple because I have already told you that of is the only word that you have to remember is a preposition. Preposition goes there, the object of the preposition goes there. All your other prepositions are any way that you can go, like around, above, below, beneath. Let's say above the clouds. All right, so above is your preposition. So we're going to put it like so. The noun, that's the object of the preposition, is clouds. So we're going to put it on the noun line. Now, remember, you have to use every single word. We haven't used the 
Come on, this is basic stuff. You guys remember this. What kind of clouds? The clouds. So the, even though it's technically an article, we're using it as an adjective because it's telling you what kind of clouds. But if it said above the blue clouds, what kind of clouds? The clouds. What other kind of clouds? Blue clouds. All right, now that's your basic structure of just doing the prepositional phrase. Let's do a whole sentence. The bird flew above the clouds. The bird flew above the clouds. What are we talking about? Bird. Draw your structure. What did the bird do? That's right, he flew. Back to the beginning of the sentence. What kind of bird? The bird. Here's your prepositional phrase. And in this case, it's functioning as an adverb because it tells you where the action took place. So where did the bird fly? Above the clouds. That's a prepositional phrase. Above is your preposition. Clouds is the object of the preposition. What kind of clouds? The clouds. I have used every word in the sentence. That's how you do it. It's really pretty simple. Okay, now, I have attached to this lesson your first ten sentences, which you should have out in front of you now. If not, pause the video, get those ten sentences out. Like always, I'm going to help you with the first couple of them. Okay? So, here's the first sentence. The scent of lilies was in the air. Okay? Again, first thing you do is you ask yourself, what are we talking about? What's the subject? We're not talking about lilies. We're talking about how they smell. We're talking about the scent. Come on, use your common sense. Before we go any further, though, let me give you a new rule. Of lilies is a prepositional phrase. Here's the rule. A prepositional phrase cannot be the subject of the sentence. Can't be. I didn't make this stuff up. I just learned it so I could teach it to you. Of lilies is a prepositional phrase. So right there, if you are keen on memorizing rules, then just remember that rule. A prepositional phrase cannot be the subject. So if you start to draw your structure and you put lilies down, Oh, wait a minute, of lilies, that's a prepositional phrase, and the rule is, it can't be a subject. But our common sense tells us that we're talking about the scent, okay? So the scent is your subject. Now we have a linking verb, was. Linking verbs have to link to something. Ah, here comes the tricky part. In the air. Mm. In is a preposition. So it's going to link to a preposition. That's going to be a new thing that you're learning today. All right, so pay attention here. Let me get a blank screen back up there so, so that I can write on it. The scent of a, <clears throat> excuse me, the scent of lilies was in the air. We're talking about scent. Write it down, draw the structure. You've got a linking verb, it's was. It has to link to something. In this case, it links to a prepositional phrase. Now we know that prepositional phrases are structured like this. So it would be in, and air is your noun, that's the object. What kind of air? The air. Now the first mistake that everybody's going to want to make is that you're going to want to put this prepositional phrase underneath of here. Okay? I'm going to do that, but don't write this down, because this will be wrong. 
This is what most people are going to want to do. If you do it like this, then that's telling us you're not linking was. And linking verbs have to link. So you have to get this up here somehow. Here's the new thing. It's called a pedestal. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, to get our prepositional phrase on top of the noun line, we draw a pedestal. And it kind of looks like you're playing hangman. But we haven't got to the arms and the head yet. Alright, that's your pedestal. Now you can take that prepositional phrase structure and put it up on top of here. Just like that. And don't forget your little tail. In is your preposition. Air is the object of the preposition. The is our article functioning as an adjective. Sent was in the air. New things are cool to learn. Now we haven't finished yet because we still have other words in the sentence. We've got to go back to the beginning. What kind of scent? The scent. What other kind of scent? Of lilies. Prepositional phrase of lilies. That's it. That's your new thing. You've learned about structuring prepositional phrases. You learned a new structure with a pedestal. Now, not every prepositional phrase needs a pedestal. If it's modifying the noun or telling where the action is happening or how the action is happening, then it goes below the base noun line. But if it is part of the verb phrase with a linking verb, then you use the pedestal. That's the only time you use the pedestal. Please refer back to this lesson. If you get stuck and you start doing things incorrectly, okay? Now tomorrow, before I give you the assignment for then, I will go over these 10 sentences and the correct way to structure them. And just like we always did before, anything that you did incorrectly, then fix it. Please do not wait until tomorrow to do this. Do them now. Even if you do them incorrectly, like I said before, you'll learn from your mistakes quite often. If you say, mm, I don't remember how to do it, I'll wait till tomorrow when he shows us the right way. You're almost wasting your time because that's just as bad as copying somebody's homework. But if you do it and you say to yourself, oh, I can't remember how to do it, well, let me try it. This is the way I think it is. And even if you do it wrong, then tomorrow when I put the right versions up on the board, you go, oh, I did that one wrong. Yeah, okay, it makes sense. You will learn from your mistakes. And some of you are going to get it just like that right away. Happy hunting to you because it's going to be a fun ride. We've got a whole lot more to learn. I will see you guys tomorrow. Do these 10 sentences right now. That's your classwork slash homework. And then tomorrow, uh, before we move on to the next lesson, I will cover this information. Bye-bye.